The Jump Total War here, and today let's talk about the Shadows of Change DLC blog, uh, which this is a very unique situation, something that very rare to see within the Total War community, where you've got one of the highest level executives come out of the shadows, the Chief Product Officer, Rob Bartholomew, and make a statement here. And the reaction that the Total War community gave was just chef's kiss, just delicious, exactly what this statement deserves. You guys have responded to it just perfectly. I've been away the past few days, so I haven't had to ignite any sort of flames. I haven't had to tell, uh, suggest anything. You guys just know what you're doing right now, and I am just so proud of what you guys are doing. So I really want to congratulate the entire Total War community, from Reddit to Steam discussion forums to Twitter, YouTube, the other creators. Just congratulate you guys on finally understanding that you have all the power in this sort of situation. You always have had all the power and you are exerting that power exactly the way you should with mockery and with voting with your wallet to finally get Creative Assembly to quiver in their boots and make such a ridiculous statement. And then you have completely called their bluff on this. And we'll go through and I'll, I'll talk about the bluffs and, and situation and then also have a look at some of the memes that you guys have created, especially on the Reddit, which are just Oh, just, I just love it. love what you guys have done. And, you know, I don't even feel like I need to do anything. You guys, you don't need me. You've, you've matured. You've just, you've just done everything that you need to do. And I think the results on this is going to be better behavior from Creative Assembly. So let's go through this statement, but I really want to, uh, can't stress enough just how proud I am of each and every one of you in the Total War community. Because even if you're someone that pre ordered the DLC, you have the right to vote with your wallet, however way you see fit. But, the fact that we're, we're, I'm not seeing the community tearing itself to pieces and instead redirecting its energy towards Creative Assembly, the company itself, not the individual staff members, members, it has just been a pleasure to watch. It's exactly what you guys needed to do. Anyway, let's go through this. Now, the first two statements here are nothing special, but I'll read it off word for word. So he says, first off, I'd like to thank you for making your voices heard over the past week. Hopefully, longer term Total War fans know that even when we're quiet, we're always listening to everything you have to say to us. We've had many conversations about it internally and would like to shed some light on the situation. So, you know, they're, they're listening. Are they going to do anything about it? Let's see. So last week, we revealed the latest DLC for Total War Warhammer 3 Shadows of Change, bringing the Changeling, Yuanbo, Mother of Ostankia, and more to the game. And uh, the teams have been hard at work f on this for some time and are excited for you to get your hands on it. Pre-order now. <laughs> At full price. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, to get right into it, our, and this is a statement that I really want to address here. Uh, to get right into it, our costs are up. Unfortunately, that means the prices have to rise. We know that any increase is going to be tough, which is why our prices have remained fairly stable over the past few years. The downside is that any increase today is going to be more noticeable. Yes. Okay. So going to be more noticeable when you increase the price by 150%. <laughs> you know, it's a bit of a tough pill to swallow. This statement here is such a load of horseshit that you try to get the Total War community followed because it's a really vague statement, right? None of this is actually false information, but it is shoveled to you in such a way that it's like, poor family business, please understand, you know, sort of thing. Oh, your costs are up. So when you were bragging about uh, opening up a new studio I in England, oh, I guess that has to do with this costs are up as you're expanding the company. In regard to these costs being up, does that mean that you're putting more workforce onto Total War Warhammer? Because I know for a fact that on the closing of uh, when Immortal Empires was first coming out, that experienced staff members, people who had been working on DLC for Total War Warhammer since day one, were shifted from this project and moved to something else, whether it be the next historical Total War game, Pharaoh, probably not Pharaoh, I don't know. Uh, but a huge amount of workforce was lifted from, Creative, uh, from Total War Warhammer and redistributed elsewhere. So when... When we hear the costs are up, that probably means the entire company because the entire company is spending more because it's expanding because it is working on on uh, projects that haven't been released. How is that the fucking problem of the Total War Warhammer community? How is it that this one one game, which hasn't been treated very well, hasn't been given it the attention it really deserves, how is it their problem to uh, lift up the entire fucking company you know, it's not our fault you decide to make hyenas. Nobody asked for it. I understand if you want to take your profits and make hyenas, but that doesn't mean you should gouge the Total War community so that you can make other 
profit uh, other other games and then gouge that community later down the track as well. So when it says the costs are up, the the actual workforce on Total War Warhammer, it's like 20 people working on it. So Total War Warhammer has always been hugely profitable at the, the previous price point that it what was at, like um, 13, $15 or whatever for the uh, the previous Lord Packs, because you're getting roughly around the same amount of content um, because there used to be more in the FLC stuff that would come out alongside it. So you're getting roughly about the same. Now, if you're going to use inflation as an argument, then 40 to 50% of a price increase is understandable. You know, if the prices went up to $20 US or, or euros, that would be understandable. But 150% is just ridiculous. And of course, it's going to be more noticeable when you make such a gigantic price jump like that. So yeah, this is just a gi- gigantic pile of horseshit and nobody swallowed it. So that's just good to see. Then we've got this over here. There's no good time to pri- uh, to increase prices and we have not taken this step lightly, although we have taken it very quickly. However, this is the business reality of supporting Total War Warhammer 3 and ensuring we're able to offer the years of extra content that we're currently planned. Okay, let's rearrange this statement, okay? So, however, this is the reality of Warhammer 3 supporting Creative Assembly and ensuring we're able to make the other products that we're trying to shove down other people's throats uh, through the content that we are trying to shovel down to your throats. That is the actual truth of this sort of situation here. Supporting Total War Warhammer 3 in its current, like the amount of budget they've got currently got into it, is relatively cheap. Making the actual game is the expensive part, which they couldn't, they kind of botched with that quite significantly. But making a DLC pipeline and then just funneling DLC through is relatively cheap, especially when they're reusing a lot of the same assets and mechanics. So this is like the biggest pile of bullshit statement um, that you could have made here. This is just, this is really deceptive sort of language here. And it also reveals like a, a veiled threat that, oh, if you don't buy Total War Warhammer 3 uh, DLC, well, we're not going to support Total War Warhammer 3 anymore. So here's the thing. Creative Assembly uh, only has one profitable uh, let's see, area at the moment. You know, uh, Hyenas hasn't been released yet. Pharaoh hasn't been released yet. Three Kingdoms has been canned. Troy's not doing anything and essentially been canned. The only game that they're supporting that's actually making any money is Total War Warhammer 3. Even after the ridiculous controversies, it's still an absolute cash cow. To say that it's... To, even to insinuate that you're going to stop supporting Total War Warhammer 3, it would be this the stupidest decision the company could make because even if the sales are down by like 50%, it would still be ridiculously profitable because of how easy it is to pump out uh, just new lords every now and again. So this is a ridiculously tone deaf argument, and luckily the, the community has just seen straight through it as the entire load of garbage that it actually is. Okay, so more statements. So he says that said, we do need to challenge ourselves to ensure that the uh, th- this cost still offers good value. Ultimately, that's up to each of you to decide, and we'll keep trying to balance that. That's entirely true. Yep, it's up to each of you to decide uh, whether or not it's good value, and you guys are making that voice very loud and clear that you either do or do not think it is worth and I I would encourage you to keep doing that regardless of which position you do have on it like if you do think it's valuable make your voice heard even if people are telling you to shut up uh, if you're in the minority make your voices heard and you know vote with your wallet of course we will want more people to play sorry of course we want more people to play we want to continue to deliver content you're excited to see and we want to do that for as long as we can cool make reasonable product at a reasonable price that's all you got to do. People are looking at this and saying it's unreasonable. And, you know, you're not addressing that by saying, you know, we, we want to we wanted to keep doing it. But, you know, we've got to support Warhammer 3, you know. Poor family business. <laughs> you know, please understand. Okay. And then there's some more stuff over here. So this statement here is from Rich Aldridge, who I have absolutely no beef with whatsoever. So this statement here from him is not an issue. 
So this is someone working at the Creative Assembly who I would never want to target. This is someone who's actually doing good work at Creative Assembly. Leave, leave him alone. Just let him keep doing his thing. Give him whatever funding he needs to keep doing it because he kept Warhammer 2 alive and he's doing a good job with Warhammer 3. You know, I just think his resources are stretched thin. You know, he just doesn't have the, the workforce needed to basically have, as Milk and Cookies Total War said, a custodian team in order to patch things. Speaking of which, the fact that... Um, Nakai hasn't been able to recruit Croxagors for a month and a half, and it has been a very simple fix for them to do it, and models have shown us that it's a very simple fix, is ridiculous. This is a paid DLC that hasn't been working correctly for a month and a half that you know a lot of people paid for. This is something that should be a hot fix to fix. This shouldn't be paid DLC, paid patch to sort of fix this kind of stuff because it was ridiculous. Also with the uh, the vowels with Bretonia, ridiculous that that stuff's not been fixed. That's that's hot fix kind of stuff. Um, so that's just ridiculous. Anyway, so to recap, we know this is a tough change for some of our players. Uh, we know this may mean some of you will wait for future discounts or sale. Probably the vast majority of people will wait for future discounts or sales or maybe even not even purchase it at all. Which by the way, I want to make this statement very clear. I want nothing but this game to flourish. I want this game to reach the widest audience it possibly can. I want it to, anybody who wants to play Total War Warhammer, I want this game to be able to play them. Uh, able, this game to be playable for them. Sorry, I just mumbled my words there. Um, but the biggest barrier to entry for anybody that's interested in Total War Warhammer is these ridiculous price hikes. People look at this stuff, even when it's on sale, because this this particular DLC, when it's on a 50% discount, will still be more fucking expensive than the other Lord Packs, which offer a similar amount of content. Uh, so it's massively overpriced, massively pr price gouged. And also, Creative Assembly is raising the prices on their past DLC as well. So anyway, and we know that this explanation does not make the situation any easier. Um, so why did you make this statement then? So what was the point of this? You didn't reveal any information. You're just like, poor family business, please understand. Nobody's going to have any sympathy for that. I uh, just don't, don't, know, don't know what you're thinking. Uh, but it's important for you to hear it from us. And we hope that if nothing else, this helps clarify why this decision has been made. It hasn't. No, because you haven't been honest. It's simple this. Um, we at Creative Assembly, we want more money. That's, be honest about it. If you, if, like, you would get shit for it. But if you said, um, to get right to it, we need more money. We just, we just like money. Money makes us happy and we want more of it. And we think that you should have to pay for it. I'd probably respect them a little bit more. They'd probably get a very similar response. But let's be honest, that's the, the, that's the reality of it. Uh, finally, we need to ask you again to stop directing abuse at individual team mem members. Frustrated as you may get, these are human beings who spend many hours representing you and your voices within the studio. All of our work gets easier when they are treated with respect. So I'm not 100% familiar with any of this stuff here. Um, I really hope that people are not directing abuse at individual team members. I know that every single creator has been telling people not to do this. I haven't been seeing it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen because a lot of people might just send an email uh, being abusive to to individual team members, especially the community managers who had nothing to do with this whatsoever. If anyone's going to be blamed for it, it's going to be Rob Bartholomew, who, by the way, probably got like a bunch of pay increases over the past 18 months, so bonuses and crap. So a lot of the money that, that comes from these DLCs goes directly into his pocket. Um, so let's let's not bullshit around the bush on that one. But this entire statement is just an entire shovel of horseshit that luckily the Total War community is just not swallowing. So good on you for that. Now, let's have a look at the uh, the stuff here. So this was apparently from my Discord, but I'm not sure it was it was messaged to me by someone. But uh, Creative Assembly Lampoon putting the gun to Total War Warhammer 3. If you don't buy this DLC, we'll kill this Warhammer 3. Which, let's just put it here. It's an empty threat. Even if... Uh, this DLC doesn't sell anywhere near as well as it should. The reason for that is just the price. It will eventually sell as deal as the uh, sales come out and as third-party uh, websites get access to it. So this DLC will eventually be profitable for Creative Assembly, as will future DLCs for Total Warhammer 3. It's a cash cow. Creative Assembly might as well turn this gun around and point it directly at themselves rather than shooting uh, Total War Warhammer 3. It is their cash cow. Shooting it makes absolutely no sense. It, even with all of this controversy, 
this game is still going to uh, move units. So <laughs> it's, it's such a stupid statement for Creative Assembly to have made. So let's have a look at some more uh, Reddit posts over here. Remember, guys, asking for a better product or a quality product that matches the price is childish behavior. C.A. White Knight, do you guys not have monies? Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, again, we, we don't know if individual people are directing their anger towards individual team members at Creative Assembly. And if that is happened, that really should stop. Uh, but it's entirely possible that they just make up this sort of statement to try to um, get play the victim. Well, guys, be be careful. You know, be, be be nice to us poor family business please understand um but then again if it is actually happening please stop it you know so but I, again i don't have the evidence of that and if there is evidence i would like it to be shown um so i could you know um uh, condemn it that's what i was trying to say okay then we got this other one over here well clarice have the players stop screaming it buys the dlc for 20 pounds or else it kills the game again yeah, I, I like that. These are the kind of memes that we're seeing on the Reddit. I love it when when there's actually humor in the situation. I think this is great. DLC prices are bullshit. So Twelve hours ago, so Creative Assembly, you know, stop being a bunch of greedy bastards or draw twenty five. <laughs> so they're going to keep drawing those twenty fives. They're really going to keep pushing this until you until you cave or they cave, uh, and they'll cave when they're not making money. If this is actually turns out to be a bad business decision, they'll cave. And that's the thing. That's why you got to vote with your wallet. Okay, then we've got over here, feels bad, man. Total War Warhammer 3 uh, players getting screwed by CA, historical Total War fans, first time. Uh, truth be told, we've been getting a bit screwed by Creative Assembly ever since Warhammer 3 first came out. Um, it's just getting pretty egregious now. Um, but yeah, historical Total War fans, my God, did they get screwed over royally by Creative Assembly multiple times, especially Three Kingdoms players. I actually kind of regret not backing them up uh, back in the day because it was absolute bullcrap, especially that Future of Three Kingdoms video. That was like another case of of putting community members, uh, uh, the, like developer teams, on the firing line to justify a bullshit decision that was just purely made out of greed. They are, oh, we're not making as much money, so we're going to try to make a new game to make more money, sort of thing, even though their DLC was actually the problem because it just wasn't good DLC. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that too much. So we got this one over here. This was uh, this, it's fairly small. Uh, prices had to be increased to ensure continued updating of the game and future content for years to come. Rob Chino, both of them, you big fat liar. So, yep, I pretty much agree with that. This is what I'm talking about. You guys didn't need me to, to make a reaction video. You you saw right through the bullshit straight off the bat. I'm so proud of you guys. And then now it all makes sense. Blizzard Entertainment, Creative Assembly, making bad decisions that ruin their game. Yep. Yeah, uh, I hate the fact that Creative Assembly is like being compared to Blizzard. Blizzard is disgusting. I used to have a lot of respect for Blizzard, and now I don't touch their games. Is that a principle? I was gonna get Diablo Four, but after I saw what they were up to, I was like, Ugh, yuck! I'm not. I, I actually want to play the game, but I just hate Blizzard, so I don't want to touch it. And then this one here. This one's my favorite, but you got to zoom in a little bit to to really see it. This gun got 5,000 upvotes. Further proof CA doesn't play their games. They didn't realize threaten never works. So you've got already reliability quite low. Uh, some some uh, at war with, with Steam. I can't see what that is. Uh, YouTube and Reddit. Was it, oh, was it that like uh, Metacritic? I don't know. Um, oh, non-aggression pact with whales. Good one, good one. Um, hey, hey, so you don't like our prices here? Eh? Well, it'd be a shame if we are just stopped updating the game entirely. Your offers, less and less content, no more improvements, bug fixes if we feel like it, demand $25, $25, $25, and the consumer base tired of this bullshit, threaten. And if you've played Total Warhammer 3 and you've ever threatened, you know that the majority of the time threaten doesn't work and just just backfires on you. <laughs> you've not only lost this sale, but any, uh, any in the future reliability very low done with this bullshit this is a this is a really good meme i'm really i mean you guys have already seen it essentially i'm getting, coming to this quite late but this is absolutely hilarious so just i guess in summary with all of this don't direct your anger towards individual um developers they don't have any any um decision over this executives like rob bartholomew they are the ones that make this sort of decision and it really does show how just tone deaf and stupid the statement is coming from someone who just probably sits up in the ivory tower not paying attention to the situation at all and just trying to make a statement to get you guys to 
to um, essentially out of fear of the game being cancelled to go and buy this DLC or else sort of thing um, in, in sort of the softest possible way you possibly could, you know, without being super direct, like blunt, like I would say it, you know, buy this game or else I'll fucking kill it. You know, they're not going to say that. So that's sort of the the underlying text behind what's being said here. There's the, the soft the soft language that's being used, but you know, it's I'm so proud of you guys are just being able to see right through it. Anyway, that's the end of this one here. Um, just keep doing what you're doing. You you guys are doing great. Don't fall for their bullshit. Wait for them to you know meet your terms. You know, and it's entirely up to you um, how long you you're willing to to. Uh, press your advantage in this situation here, but you have the advantage in the situation. I promise you that Warhammer 3 is not in any danger of being canned. It would be so stupid of Creative Assembly. It would, from a business point of view, they would much prefer to cave to your demands and lower the price of this DLC than to can you know, three or four years worth of really easy work, which is essentially funding all their other projects that are probably going to fail as well. Um, so they're, they're not going to can Total War Warhammer 3, especially if Pharaoh fails. Now, if another Total War game comes out and it sort of, it, it does really well, see, this is kind of what happened with Three Kingdoms, right? They were competing with Total War Warhammer 3, uh, 2 at the time. And Warhammer 2 was just outselling the DLC. And so like, oh, we don't need Three Kingdoms anymore. We can rely on Warhammer 2. Um, they can't do that. They're not going to be able to do that with Pharaoh. There's, there's no way in hell, I'm almost certain, that Pharaoh is just not going to be the cash cow that Total War Warhammer 3 is because it just doesn't have that massive fan base behind it. And it's also just kind of doesn't look like a very good game at all. As for Hyenas, that really could go either way. I do, I'm not familiar with that particular um, genre of games. Um, it apparently is getting a high praise, but I'm not interested in it at all. It might make Creative Assembly a ton of money or it might completely blow up in their face. But things to keep in mind is that until these games are actually launched, they're not going to drop support for Total War Warhammer 3 because from a business point of view, it would be really stupid. And threatening the community with that is just asinine, just an absolute bald-faced lie. So really proud of you guys. Keep making your voices heard. Vote with your wallets. And I do have early access to it. I was going to release some content the other day, but after all of this stuff um, <laughs> happened, I put the, I've got two videos in reserve ready to go for early access. I put them on the back burner because I'm like, eh, I don't really know if I should be making content on Shadows of Change DLC and sort of marketing it kind of. So I've just, I put that, I might release them tomorrow. You guys let me know in the comments below whether you're not, whether you want to see the content. I basically made two doom stacks with the new content with, um, uh, with Shadows of Change DLC. Let me know if you want to see it or whether you'd just rather a disaster battle because uh, I, I'm not, like, I can't talk about the DLC because I'm under embargo, but I want to give you guys information about the DLC. So I'm conflicted. You guys need to sort of let me know what you want and I want to do right by you. So inform me what you want and I'll do that. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Appreciate you guys and we'll see you next time. Later, guys.